इंजरी ऑफ योर सॉफ्ट टिश्यू बोन स्ट्रक्चर्स और वी कैन यू ओवर यूज इंजरीज लाइक आई टी बी कॉमनली हम लोग जो पढ़ते हैं इलियोटिबियल बैंड जो है हमारा वो अगर ओवर यूज हो रहा है तब भी इंजरी होती है नॉर्मली अगर हम लोग देखें मेन कॉजेस में अगर हम लोग इसको चेक करें तो फर्स्ट कॉज जो हम लोग देखते हैं दैट इज एसीएल पीसीएल और मेनेस्कस इंजरी जो आपके सॉफ्ट इश्यूज हैं आपकी मसल डैमेज हो रही है क्वाड्रिसेप्स हम लोगों ने बेसिकली सुना है या फिर हम लोग बोलते हैं वीएमओ दैट इज वास्टस मेडियालिस ऑब्लिक मसल एसीएल हमारा एंटीरियर क्रूशियट लेगामेंट पीसीएल पोस्टीरियर क्रूशियट लेगामेंट या मेनेस्कस किसी भी चीज के कारण इनमें से कोई भी सॉफ्ट इश्यू अगर डैमेज होता है तो उसके कारण आपको नी पेन आएगा घुटनों में दर्द आएगा मैकेनिकल प्रॉब्लम मैकेनिकल मतलब जो डॉक्टर प्रेक्षा कैन यू यूज मोर ऑफ मोर ऑफ इंग्लिश श्योर सर डॉक्टर प्रेक्षा कैन यू यूज मोर ऑफ द इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज एज सम पीपल कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड हिंदी हियर ओके श्योर सर अनदर वन इज अनदर वन कैटेगरी इज मैकेनिकल प्रॉब्लम एंड या या प्लीज कंटिन्यू श्योर यस सर मैकेनिकल प्रॉब्लम्स लाइक आईटीबी इलियोटिबियल बैंड सिंड्रोम इन व्हिच your ilio uh, in which your band ilio tibial band is just fric just produces a friction against your muscles and bony structure after that pain due to any muscular change muscular chains like if there is a imbalance between tfl your tensor fasciae latae muscle and vmo vastus medialis oblique muscle if you have a pronated foot if someone is someone foot is pronated like foot is like this so due to the fallen arch our foot is in the pronation so due to the pronation tibia is rotated and if the tibia is rotated your particularly knee joint having a pain another one how we assess that there is a pain and why the pain is so for that we have a assessment skills if someone is standing is uh, simply if someone is coming to me and said i have a knee pain right side or left side whether he said so what i have to check firstly on the interior side samne se hum log kya dekhenge that is patient is in standing position just check that there is any genu verum or velgum it means verus and velgum deformity means like you have any kind of knee for uh, degeneration you saw someone with a bow legs if you uh, if you have bow legs or the joint joint legs then this condition is known as a genu verum and velgum so in the interior view what we can another we can see is patella faces forward medially aspect what we say if i am look i am standing like this i am just watching my patient and i said ye to dhang se nahi khada hai kyun nahi khada hai reason behind that is he has a genu verum deformity or valgus deformity gum means binding valgum verum is like bow legs another one criteria which we have here is if we join the ankles we ask the patient to join the ankles and after that we will check that there is is there any difference between both the legs and another one is is there any is there any difference between like two or more finger fit between the knee if we put the fingers between the both the knees is there any kind of difference or is there any kind of space if it is that is there is a genu verum deformity another one what we said to the patient is when the patient is in standing position you just check it out if he or she can fully extend his or her knees if is it then it's okay if he can't then it means it the person is having a excessive hyperlordosis which we can say after that assessment continues here we have a two pictures one is squinting patella squinting means closing so what we uh, examiner should note the position of the patella patella kis position mein hai if both the patella like right and left side knee both the patellas are going outward bahar hoga then it's a grasshopper or a frog eyed petla here is a picture also other another one is tilt upward if our petla is tilted upward literally like normal position is this if it is going upward then it's a squinting petla if it is going outward it's a grasshopper's eye if it is rotated 
or we can say in under and out it means spin petla there are the three terms first one is grasshopper petla grasshopper eye petla or we can say frog eye petla another one is squinting third one is spin first grasshopper grasshopper eyes mein outward petla another one is tilted inward that is squinting another one is rotated in and out in and out it means spin after that there is a term mentioned positions may be altered due to tight structures if i have a tight it band if i have a tight it band which is very much tight then what we can found is first our first condition grasshopper eye or we can say frog eye petla it band is tightened then the petla is pulling outward that is grasshopper eye another one is lateral view standing first one is anterior in which we can find three main things first one is what the first one is we can just check it out we ask the patient to close the ankles after that we check the space between both the knees if it is two fingers or more than two fingers it means that it is a genu verum condition second one we have grasshopper eye or frog eye petla which means if there is a tight it band then what happens it pulls the petla outside if the petla is outside it means it what it means like it shape as a grasshopper eye another one we we look like is here squinting of petla if our inner thigh muscles are very much tight our adductors are tight then what happens it pulls the petla inside inside it means it is a squinting of petla another one what we can able to see in the lateral view if person is standing laterally and what you can able to see is there is a two terms petla baja and alta what is the meaning of petla alta and baja it means in the condition where alta alta means upward what happened with the petla it going or it move upward direction like this is the normal position due to the tightening of quadriceps muscle due to the tightening of our psoas muscle what happens petla is going up and it is uh, petla baja is opposite to that it means it is going downward petla is going downward that is baja and petla is going upward it is alta after that first we check for the interior view then lateral now now what is the next point is posterior view what we find in the posterior view it is baker's cyst what is the meaning of baker cyst it's normally the synovial fluid is uh, coming out from the synovial membrane which uh, we can also say that the herniation of the synovial fluid from the uh, synovial tissue from the synovial membrane एक प्रोट्रूजन फॉर्म होगा देर इज अर्नियशन प्रोट्रूजन ऑफ द साइनोवियल टिश्यू आफ्टर दैट देर इज अंटीरियर एंड लेटरल व्यूज सिटिंग इन द सिटिंग पोजिशन बिफोर दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द स्टैंडिंग पोजिशन एंटीरियर व्यू इन द स्टैंडिंग इन विच वी आर वी आर गोइंग थ्रू द ग्रास हॉपर ग्रास हॉपर आय एंड स्क्विंटिंग ऑफ स्क्विंटिंग ऑफ द पेटला आफ्टर दैट इन द लेटरल व्यू वी आर सींग दैट alta and the baja term after that in the posterior in the standing posterior view we are seeing baker cyst after that last one is in the sitting what happens in the sitting view see there are many kind of uh, assessments which we are going through that like uh, some of the physiotherapist or some of the personal trainers advise go through the uh, squatting assessment but one basic assessment is patient is in a sitting position 90 degree partial weight bearing that is a kind of a half squatting position observe the patient from the front and the side view simply anteriorly and laterally when we uh, see the anteriorly what we are facing we are looking for the femur femur our main thigh bone so what is the meaning of that it means what happens when when you squat 90 degree you will show the misalignments of the petla if there is any kind of 
misalignment you are going to see in the sitting view what happens when you sit your uh, petal is misaligned misaligned displaced so what we uh, what you will gonna see is petla alta baja and you can also going through the uh, going to see the grasshopper's eye or we can uh, say that the frog eye after that another one is active movements now ask the patient to do the active movements of the joint like you just simply said move 90 degree uh, you just said the patient to squat 90 degree then check what happens to the particularly condition is there any kind of uh, alta baja or petla alta situation is there or not after that there are some special tests you find that okay fine if a uh, patient is coming to you you just assess properly and check it out that yes it is a uh, petla is displaced now what happens you just have to find out that which particularly muscle which particularly uh, soft tissue is involved which goes to uh, by which uh, the particularly petla is going for the displacement now we just have the five or six tests special tests which have the high specificity first one is for the acl anterior cruciate ligament that is anterior drawer test or the latchman's test for the anterior drawer test what you have to do for the anterior drawer test you have to just ask the patient to be in the supine position now bend his or her knee at the 30 degree at the 30 degree wait at the 30 degree and then just ask the patient to resist you and now you just put your fingers and grasp the petla and grasp the joint line and pull it out if there is any kind of displacement it means that acl ligament test is positive that is anterior cruciate ligament test wait i'll show you on the model what the test is Guys, if you have any questions, any doubt, you can ask in Q and A section there. And uh, after the session, Doctor Preksha will answer to everyone's questions. So, please, if you have any doubt, any questions, you can definitely ask there. Okay, Doctor Preksha will join in a moment.
Okay, guys, Dr. Prakash is here. Patient is in the supine position. You just have to bend it thirty degree. You just place the foot in the thirty degree of flexion. Now, just put your hip on that. Place your thumbs on the joint line. Now, pull it out. If there is a any kind of soft tissue injury, the patella is going outside. So the test is positive in the ACL for the ACL ligament. Now, what happens for the pivot shift test and the latchman test? What you have to do for the Meres test? Meres test is for your the meniscus. What you have to do? Place it for the thirty degree abduction. Now just. Put the force outside. When you are putting the force outside, if there is any kind of displacement of the meniscus, it will come outside. First, we are revising again. First, for the ACL ligament test, anterior cruciate ligament test, what you have to do? Just bend the knee of the patient thirty degree. Place or hold some, somewhat like this. Now grasp it like this. Hold the joint line and push it out. When you are going to push it out, if there is any kind of soft tissue injury, it will pull out. This one is for the ACL test, right? Right. Then next one is for the your meniscus injury, that is Barrett's test. What you are doing? Put your hand here and place a force. the opposite direction that is in the outward side if there is any kind of meniscal injury it will go outside which one uh, which indicates the positive side is there any doubt now for the diagnosis all these special tests are for uh, for the assessment now for the diagnosis purpose what we have to check inspect your knee for the what swelling is there any kind of swelling which indicates uh, there is might be a leakage of the synovial fluid is there any kind of pain kya wahan pe pain hai particularly area mein is there any kind of tenderness when you suppose it is a quadriceps muscle you just press it If there is any kind of pain, patient says, "Ow, there is pain." That it means tenderness is there. Warmth. It means is there any kind of heat present over there? Bruises, bluishness, which indicates that the there is might be a leakage, or uh, which indicates that there might be a particularly restriction uh, between the blood flow. After that. Go for the imaging test. That is. you just a uh, patient is coming to you you just check it in the standing position after that you just clearly diagnosis from that that is there any kind of uh, injury in the sitting position also like you just find it out grasshopper's eye right that uh, there is a displacement of the patella you just find it out that the grasshopper's eye it means there is a injury of the adductor muscle uh, or it may be the if there is a sprain of the lateral side muscles that is tfl or it band now what you have you just have to check it out that is is it true or not for checking that there is a x ray mri ct scan and ultrasound in x ray you just going through the bony structure is there any kind of fracture or not mri in the mri you just going through the soft tissue structures and in the ultrasound you just going through the muscles only after that there is a treatment what is the basic treatment for that first one is self care self care you just get to know that you are in uh, you will gonna hurt by something xyz just go and take rest 
in the early starting 48 hours to 72 hours 24 48 36 and 40 uh, 72 hours like three to four days you will just gone through the ice after that go for the heat compression or heat wax uh w uh hwf that is hot water fermentation now for the compression why we give the compression compression is because you just what you are doing, there is an injury in this area. Now, what you have to do, you just press it so harder, like you just tie it, a uh, crab bandage or something else, like BFRT bands also, you just tie it out. For, for what you are doing this, for that, you will just increase the particularly, uh, particularly blood flow of that area. Now, elevation, non-steroidal, any kind of nasades non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, injections, corticosteroid injection for the recovery and the increase in, uh, decrease in swellings and increase the particularly recovery time. Hyaluronic acid, which is good for the synovial fluid. We are going through that. Next one is surgery interventions. Look, surgery is not uh, not the option in the starting stages. It is the last stage. Like if you are going through the ACL test, it is positive. Then you are go and check it for the uh, from the MRI that you are right or wrong. If there is grade three injury, then you are going for the arthroscopic surgery. Otherwise, just go and manage it conservatively. Now, last and most important, physiotherapy treatment. MFR on the calf. Next one trigger point therapy or trigger point release on the gluteus maximus with the help of the dry needling you uh, you can able to release it with the help of the elbow you can after that there is a petlar mobilization and glides okay there is a condition you just find it out that your patient is having a knee pain due to hardness of the it band like there is a tightness in the it band and Due to, the, uh, due to that tightness, your inner thigh muscles, that is adductor and uh, what I'm saying, VMO, vastus medialis oblique is going into the weakening condition. That what you are going to do, just release the IT band manually. Uh, by uh, You can go by the MFR and dry needling, cupping on the IT band to release it. And then just strengthen the opposite antagonist muscles. After that, there is a taping technique, muscle stimulation. If you will gonna find that uh, your VM, uh, your patient's VMO is very weak, you just uh, place the muscle stimulator on that. And then after that, if you are placing the muscle stimulator, then say the patient to do the activity like uh, static quads, dynamic quads. You will get the results faster. After that, tens or ultrasonic for the just for the pain management remember tens and ultrasonic is not the permanent solution in the physiotherapy physiotherapy is much more better and advanced about uh, tens and uh, ultrasonic we have nowadays we have strengthening exercises we have mfr trigger point therapy so in these pictures first one what i'm doing is iastm instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization we just going the going through the calf release in the second one mfr myofascial release on hamstring if we are going through uh, if someone's hamstring is tight then quadriceps will not activate after that we have trigger points therapy by the dry needling on the soleus muscle and calf muscle if patient is coming to you and saying i have an anterior knee pain then go through that that if there is a 90% probability that muscles like calf and soleus, your gastrocnemius and soleus are tight. Just release that and train the antagonist muscle. You will get the result. After that, in the fourth picture, what I'm doing is I'm just placing the muscle stimulator on quadriceps muscle. Which uh, muscle in the quadriceps, particularly VMO, vastus medialis oblique. Because you will get to know uh, you all are uh, very familiar to that, that vastus medialis oblique is the muscle which pulls petla inward. After that, again, we are doing 
some kind of uh, ISTM on the hamstring. So now I'm just welcome the questions, please. Jo questions aap log puch sakte hain. Is there any question? Hanji medial collateral ligament ke liye, MCL ke liye hai test. But kahi jaga pe agar aap log read karenge new me to uh, wo aapko milega ki uh, hum log meniscus ke saath bhi abhi use kar rahe hai us test ko. Alright guys, that was a very very uh, good and informative session and now let's uh, move ahead with questions Okay, so if you have any questions, any doubt related to knee pain, maybe you are facing some kind of pain and maybe you are like a physiotherapist or a trainer and you want to learn how you can definitely uh, can give benefits to your clients, to your patients, then you can ask all your questions here. Please do not ask questions in the chat box. Okay, just like uh, there's someone asked, uh, when should we give ice and when heat? So there's a question in chat box. Please do not ask questions in, in the chat box. Please ask your questions in Q and A. Q and A sections. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Please. Thank you. Ice is given in the starting phase. Like I'm telling you, 24 hours, 36 hours, 48 hours, and 72 hours is for the ice therapy. Another is your hot, hot therapy. That is heat fermentation, heat compression pads. Okay, one interesting question from Vinay is, uh, as we all know, strengthening is necessary, but generally what's the wrong technique or methods we apply as a physio that affects our result? One is tense is not for the strengthening. Another one is tense and US is temporary. All the modalities are temporary. Physios, please try to understand temporary hai ye sub modalities. Which the, uh, the one thing which is permanent is your hands, out of your hands. That is strengthening, stretching, ISTM, cupping, needling, you can say. And your assessment skill. One of the best skill is your assessment skill. Okay, now we have next question from uh, Sarina Akhtar. If there is chronic knee pain, which is uh, from many years, what could be the reason? You just have to check it out that what is the reason behind the knee pain. Like uh, go and go for the assessment first. Which muscle is going, which muscle is due to the, uh, which muscle is involved for the, for your knee pain. Like, is there any kind of tightness? Like we talked previously, IT band syndrome. If there is a, uh, let's suppose we have a pain due to, um, weakness of quad muscle, then you have to find that why your quadriceps is going in the weakening state. First reason might be a possibility. First reason is due to your soleus muscle, that is your calf muscle. Second one um, is your endogonous muscle, that is hamstring. If there is a, any kind of tightness in the hamstring muscle and uh, hamstring muscle and soleus muscle, then definitely there is a pain in your knee. Just go and check it. The assist, uh, main tool is assessment. I'm saying again and again. Explain about Osgoard disease and also compression treatment. Compression treatment, which you are saying, uh, compression treatment, which we give in which state? We give. First, we have to understand this. We have to understand this. Compression is necessary. Why? Because where you have to increase blood flow, you have to do bombardment. Where you need the bombardment then go for the compression therapy. Like uh, there is a new therapy. We are knowing it as a BFRT, blood flow restriction technique. So what we are going uh, to do in this therapy is we are just going and put it, uh, put the compression bandage or compression bands on the hand and then 
increases the blood supply. Why compression is needed? I answered that where we get pain, how we feel the pain, where we get pain. I uh, don't understand your question, sorry. Please, can you please uh, explain what you are trying to say here, Jina Sahib Sayyad. Uh, what is your actual question? I'm not able to understand this. Where we get pain, how we feel the pain. Maybe you are asking how to diagnose the problem, I guess. Maybe that is your question, but can you please elaborate that? Okay, next question is, uh, uh, Mr. Darsan, do you have high uric acid? Yeah. Knee joint pain. Yes, there is a possibility. Go and check the uric acid of the patient. But uh, one thing we differentiate mainly kar sakte hai, that it is, uh, the pain is due to uric acid or not. Patient is always complaining for what? Patient is always complaining that there is an inflammation. Jalan hai mujhe. Mujhe aisa lag raha hai ki mere joint mein se aag nikal rahi hai. Ye particularly words hote hai patients ke, jo wo aapko complain karenge. Agar wo kuch aisi complain kar rahe hai, then check for the RH factor or check for the uric acid also. Any specific test for MCL sprain? Ham logo ke paas jitne bhi test hai, wo uh, sub test ham logo ke specific नहीं होते किसी टेस्ट की स्पेसिफिसिटी 90% होती है सम टेस्ट हैव द स्पेसिफिसिटी ऑफ 80% 70% तो एग्जैक्ट टेस्ट एग्जैक्ट चीज के लिए पॉसिबल नहीं है हम लोग सिर्फ एक आईडिया ले सकते हैं सारे टेस्ट से एमसीएल स्प्रेन के लिए कोई टेस्ट नहीं है लिगामेंट के लिए टेस्ट है हां अगर उसमें स्प्रेन चेक करना तो जो मैंने अभी आप लोगों को बताया वेरस वेलगस टेस्ट आप वो कर सकते हैं Uh, dry needling and cupping is uh, a very important treatment. Uh, depends up to you. If you can, uh, if you know about the MFR, you go for that also. There is not a necessity that you just put and puncture uh, the muscle also. If you want, go for the MFR. If you want, go for the dry needling. Yes, next question, please. Okay, so I have a question here, Dr. Prexa. How we can decide that we should go for this MFR or maybe uh, for uh, dry needling? How we can decide that? Okay. One more factors. Uh, firstly, uh, go for the MFR. Always firstly go for the MFR, myofascial release. After that, you will find the result that is okay. Because MFR is, my, uh, MFR is painful on the trigger points. I have a pain over here. There is a trigger point. There is a knot formation. हम लोग trigger points कैसे check करते हैं ये आप लोगों को पता होगा. Suppose मुझे पता चला कि मेरे इस muscle में trigger point है. मैंने press किया, which is very painful. तो बहुत सारे patients ऐसे होते हैं जो इतना amount of pain नहीं ले सकते. तो उसमें हम लोग dry needle कर देते हैं. Same result है. Uh, after that, अगर हम लोग cupping से comparison करें, cupping कोई भी muscle release नहीं कर रहा है. Cupping क्या कर रहा है? वो उस muscle को hold कर रहा है. But, जैसे आपने उसको रिलीज किया ब्लड सर्कुलेशन बढ़ गया तो वो टेंपरेरी बेसिस के लिए रिलीफ हो गया अगेन आपको अपोजिट एंटागोनिस्ट मसल के लिए स्ट्रेंथनिंग करानी ही पड़ती है आई होप आई एम क्लियर व्हाई डू वी यूज ड्राई नीडलिंग एंड कपिंग मैंने आपको बता दिया ड्राई नीडलिंग कपिंग ड्राई नीडलिंग हम लोग ट्रिगर पॉइंट्स के लिए यूज करते हैं मसल एक्टिवेशन के लिए यूज करते हैं कपिंग इज फॉर द एक्टिवेशन आल्सो हम लोग मसल एक्टिवेशन कपिंग अगर आपने कप लगा दिया ब्रेक्योरेडियालस पे या किसी भी मसल पे लाइक अगर मी की बात कर रहे हैं आपने क्वाड्स पे कप लगा दिया एंड जस्ट मूव करा दिया उसको तो यू विल गेट द रिजल्ट जो आपको रिजल्ट नॉर्मल स्ट्रेंथिंग से मिल रहा है उससे ज्यादा मिलेगा बिकॉज आपने वहां पे मसल पावर भी बढ़ा दी साथ के साथ आपने वहां पे क्या बढ़ा दिया आपने ब्लड सर्कुलेशन इम्प्रूव कर दिया मेनेस्कल ट्रियर फिजियोथेरेपी ट्रीटमेंट मेनेस्कल इज अ शॉफ एब्सॉर्बेंट so for the treatment of uh, meniscal tear pehle to aap mujhe ye clear kijiye aap kaun se grade ka tear puchna cha rahe hain mere se grade 1 2 3 <laughs> how to find trigger points this is a very very important and the large topic so i hope hum log kisi aur topic pe is pe discuss karenge uh, yeah yeah, yeah point, and it's it's a very very vast topic it's a very vast yes, topic sir. you cannot actually Teach someone in just a uh, five or ten minutes how to find trigger points, exactly. and there are there are so many trigger points, and there are there are multiple ways to do that. So yeah, I guess that's not a question related to today's topic. So please stick to today's topic only. So the, uh, it will be very easy for everyone. So yeah, if you have any question related to knee pain regarding today's topic, please ask. Okay. Anyone? WhatsApp group. Me, we will share. PPT. 
नो सॉरी व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप में पीपीटी नहीं शेयर होगी सॉरी इट विल बी शेयरिंग वेबसाइट ओनली इन विच कंडीशन वी यूज आई ए एस टी एम आई एस टी एम इज अंस्ट्रूमेंटेड इंस्ट्रूमेंट असिस्टेड सॉफ्ट टिश्यू मोबिलाईजेशन टेक्निक इज ऑल अबाउट द रिलीज ऑफ द मसल सो वेर यू नीड द रिलीज वेर यू नीड टू गो फॉर द एम एफ आर वेर यू नीड टू गो और फॉर द सॉफ्ट ऑफ द मसल यू कैन यूज इट any another question thank you silpa for your appreciation now anyone have uh, have any questions and query regarding to today's topic please ask yes How can we decide that we are? Uh, Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, okay. According to me, which I am using is firstly go for the MFR. If you will feel that muscle is released properly, then it's fine. If you feel that no, then go for the needling or cupping or ISTM. If your patient is cooperative, if your patient is uh, able to bear the pain, then go for the ISTM because ISTM is little more painful. next uh, for the needling if your patient is uh, if your patient is uh, having no phobia for the needles then go for the needling for cupping again if your patient is ready to bear the pain little amount of pain then go for the cupping also you just have to uh, recognize that what treatment is going to suit for your different kind of patient how to differentiate between pes and sarin bursitis pain and medial plica pain okay bursitis pain which you are saying to me uh, patient sarin bursitis jo pain hai patient sarin bursitis medially placed okay so major difference between medial plica pain and uh, patient sarin bursitis pain is patient sarin bursitis pain is gone from medial side to lateral side and plica pain is just uh, what i am saying plica pain is going from medial side to the downward there is a major difference between this narali after that uh, can you please tell us about okay yes question aapka answer so karenge yeah all right uh, this question can you please okay. tell us about the course and how you will covering all the topics conditions and everything in general all right so uh, if someone don't know we have a certification course coming up Uh, certified rehab expert dr parekh and dr harmanpreet kaur will be your tutor for the certification course okay and in this in this certification course will be in two levels level 1 and level 2 so this certification course uh, rehab expert level 1 is going to start from 15th of june okay and some uh, there's some around 3 to 4 days okay so you can join that particular course and you will get to learn a lot about your uh, human body and what are the main reasons behind the injuries and how you can as a as a trainer or as a physiotherapist you can you can uh, do better okay if you are a trainer only then you still you need to uh, understand how to uh, give better options of exercises to your uh, clients if you are a physiotherapist you need to learn how you can give better treatment to your patients it's all about results in our profession it's all about results if you are giving better results to your clients then you will get more and more clients and you will get more and more money that simple very very simple thing and in this certification course we are going to cover all the topics all the joints on all, all the major minor injuries okay you could be a gym person you could be a, a soccer player you could be a cricketer and uh, from cricketer i just uh, i got to remind that dr pariksha is also with uh, female under 15 i guess Yeah, under fifteen, yes. De- Delhi State Team. This is the official physiotherapist of Delhi's under fifteen female cricket team. 
so and uh, she has a very vast experience with a sports person and recently you have write, uh, written a, a book about gay through life Kate. yeah i am reading that book also right now so it's a very uh, very good book i'm reading right now so yeah they have very vast experience dr parikh and dr Har- Har- harmanpreet so you can get to learn a lot about it right now we are in a webinar okay only i and dr preksha can talk but in certification course this that will not be as a webinar it will be a live course okay we will be able to see your uh, your face also and you can directly ask your question instead of writing writing it in q and a section or chat box you can directly raise your hand and you can uh, directly ask to your teacher that i'm not able to under- understand that particular point can you please explain it again Okay, if you have any question related to topic, I have this additional question. Can you please uh, explain what what could be the better uh, solution for that? Okay, so it will be covered everything. I know uh, all of it will be covered in this certification course that is certified rehab expert course. And tonight after eight uh, eight p.m. we have a big announcement announcement also, and that announcement will be uh, shared with you in WhatsApp group. so yeah it's with a very very great announcement and if you want to learn okay if you want to learn and you want to earn up to that obviously then definitely you have to look, look up to that and there will be theory and practical both you will get your recorded lectures also you will get your pdfs to study and everything okay we have one more question is popping sound on movement will be act as a diagnostic idea for physios uh okay Popping, uh, popping sound is a joint. Uh, is a particularly not exactly a diagnostic idea, but yes, it can be. Like if there is a um, popping sound on every time uh, we are moving uh, our joint, we we'll get the popping sound. Yes, there might be a possibility that there is a damage of the soft tissue, but not hundred percent. Next question is: If there is tightness in muscle, strengthening or MFR is going to option? Yes, of course, it is a option. Will you cover strengthening and endurance and agility training? Not in that webinar, please. No, uh, I guess uh, they are asking asking about the certification course. Sure, we are covering uh, all these topics in our webin- uh, course. Certification course. Not now. Yeah. Yeah. In in certification course, you will get to learn everything about injury management. Okay, what whatever it is, you will get to learn everything about every joint, about every condition. We have saved a complete list of conditions also on our Instagram page, and we will share it in uh, WhatsApp group again also. So yeah, all right. Uh, any more questions, guys? from where we will get the information about this course uh, sir in after we will share uh, contact list uh, list of contact uh, people they, then you can contact them and you can directly message them or call them and they will guide you about the course and we have multiple courses it's not the not the only course we have certified sports nutritionist course we have certified bodybuilding expert course we have certified fitness trainer course we have certified anatomy expert course we have multiple courses and there are multiple courses will be there in future also so any more questions related to today's webinar and is there anyone jisko kuch bhi samajh nahi aaya Thank you, Vinay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vinay. Guys, ah, uh, kya yahan par koi aisa hai jisko English samajh mein nahi aati and they are like no, mujhe kuch bhi samajh nahi aaya because of language. So that in future we will try to conduct two sessions, one in Hindi and one in English, right, Preksha? Because we have multiple students who are from ah uh, not Hindi speaking states. they cannot understand hindi and there are we have multiple people who cannot understand english is there someone who cannot understand english at all
क्या यहाँ पर कोई ऐसा जिसको इंग्लिश समझ में नहीं आती है और उसके लिए ये टॉपिक समझना थोड़ा सा मुश्किल रहा यू कैन मैसेज डायरेक्टली टू Okay guys i guess there is no question left so yeah we are wrapping this session and thank you so much dr pariksha for coming and sharing your thank you sir uh, knowledge and experience with over people over team and everyone and that was a very very great and informative session and thank you so much and guys thank you so much for attending this webinar at nsfe national school fitness education we have only one motto and that is education we want you to learn we want you to get educated so you can deliver more and more and more to society so yeah thank you so much for staying there thank you so much thank you, bye bye sir. thank you bye bye